you know, praise and worship is an act of faith. <sighs> and uh, I can only share with you that in praise and worship, everyone say, I'm, I'm a spirit. See, so you're a spirit. We are spirits. And we must get the reality that we are spirits. <laughs> you can't allow the mirror to dictate who you are because that's not you. We are spirits sent from the throne room of God Almighty into this realm and put on an earth suit. Does everybody get it? This is reality. And in this earth suit, which we're trying to maintain, to stay here as long as possible so we can fulfill the mission that God has set for us. And as we praise and worship, one of the things look, the Lord looks for is your spirit to leave you. What happens is you praise and worship the Lord. Your body is holding arms up and your spirit leaves and goes into his arms. And when your spirit leaves and goes into his arms, I can't express it. I can't explain it. But I can tell you, you're not the same. And you change because you become heavenly bound and not earthly bound. And it takes a desire to not look at and express things of the carnality. Don't look for the feeling. Look for him. Because when you look for him, all of a sudden something begins to happen. And your spirit, your body, it's almost like opens up. And your spirit leaves and goes into his arms. And there is contact. And that contact says, Daddy. And the other says, Son. And a love is expressed without words. And then there's healing. And there's freedom. And all the garbage of the mind is gone. Everything goes. Every worry, every concern, everything goes. And you can hear so clearly. You can see so clearly. Because the Spirit guides us to all truth, and He tells us things to come. He's looking for you, but your spirit. It's your spirit that goes home. It's your spirit that was sent from home. We've got to stop looking physically and realize who we really are. We are spirits. Eternal beings already started our eternal life. Born of the spirit, not of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of the will of God awakened. See, we were sent into this world and there was a period of time where God was trying to awaken us. But the dictates of the world prevented us from being awakened for such a long time. And when we finally got to that point where we were willing to listen, to hear, an awakening came, and when we were awakened, we realized that we are just journey, journeying through this earth, and this is not our home. And there should be a desire in each and every one of us, one of us to bring everybody home and to awaken everyone, shake them until they're awakened. Oh, Hallelujah. But the enemy, he tries to prevent us from every, anything and everything to fulfill God's will and his desire. 
God wants to touch every human being and awaken them. Because it only takes one touch to say, hoo hoo. Reality. When that one touch comes, a reality hits that says, I've been lied to my whole life. <laughs> I'm not who man says I am. I'm not who I am because of the mistakes I made. I'm not who I am because of the sex, sex, su successes I've done. I'm not who I am because of my failures. I'm not who I am because I am because he is. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> Whew. There's something that the Spirit had said this morning. He's, you know, there's areas where we have personal walls. And these personal walls that we build because of offenses and all kinds of things that occurred in our life. And they're walls. The problem is, is those walls that are built prevent God from entering in. But there are personal limitations that the enemy sets in our life so that we can't grow spiritually. And there's a difference. In Matthew chapter 11, would you go there with me? My wife prepared, prepared for this. She put the fan real close this time. <laughs> Matthew eleven twenty eight. would you go there with me, please? Oh. In verse 27, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's all read this. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And no Is everybody there? Yeah. Okay. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, come to me. Now he's going to explain what's up. He says, take my yoke, which is the anointing that breaks every yoke. But his yoke, see, when you're yoked with him, no yoke can entangle you. Take my yoke upon you and what? Learn. Everyone say learn. learn. Say if, if I don't learn, I get burned. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. How many of you know that anxiousness is the opposite of rest? Amen. For my yoke is what? easy and my burden is light man that's free that's freedom but he says learn from me so there must be a an area in our lives where we're always learning see learning will always take feeding and drinking observing And why we observe things, because you know, how many of y'all know you can learn from somebody else's mistake? Amen. Learning. Learning takes a thirst and hunger, doesn't it? In Romans 15. So what would stop us from desiring to learn or learning more? It's called limitations. These are limitations that the enemy puts on me and you. And sometimes we don't even realize that they're there until we're not growing anymore. Romans 15, is everybody there? In verse uh, 1, would you read it with me? We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak 
and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience, which means endurance, and comfort of the scriptures might have what? Might have what? Hope. In other words, keeping your hope alive and active, which is living in the future. Amen? If you're living in the future, can the devil touch you? No. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be what? Like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus. And that you may be with what? One mind and one mouth. Hallelujah. Glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, learning the scriptures, eating the scroll. And, and, and it, looking at other people's examples and experiences. You know, one day, uh, a book came to me, and, and, and I didn't want to read the book because the only thing I wanted to read was the Bible. And the Lord rebuked me. He said, I sent this book to you. He said, what you can learn, read in, uh, in two hours out of this book is somebody's 40 years of experience. I went, whoa. So I read the book, and man, let me tell you, it was powerful. And it opened my eyes to so many other things. See, the whole thing is, is to constantly keep our feeding your spirit. Constantly feeding your spirit. And as we continue to feed our spirit, we stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And what it does then is it breaks off limitations. Because the more you walk in the spirit, the more sensitive you are to the enemy's strategies and attacks. In fact, you'll know what he's doing before he does it. In fact, you'll know what he's doing before he does. Oh, glory. Learning the scriptures maintains, of course, living in active hope, which allows us to walk and live in the future. And again, living in the future is vitally important. Why? Because then you see all things and know all things. You live in the future to the present. Why? Is the scriptures past or future? Future. Amen? So we want to not only keep hope alive and active, which allows us to live in the future, but we want to keep our spirit filled and fed constantly because we are spirits. This may sound strange, but eternal beings are not humans. We are Immortal. Oh, if we just grab hold of that. We are immortal beings. We will live forever. So what's the problem? We are the problem, the old man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians 4. Remember, the enemy only reminds you of your past and he only can attack from the past, right? How many of y'all know things that the past can set limitations on you? How many of y'all know regret can set a limitation on you? Amen. Man, if I would have done and did and then and then and then and then and then, forget it. Then you're living in the past. Now we learn by our mistakes. I remember that. I ain't doing that again. Amen. Fool me once. Fool me twice. I'm pretty stupid. Ephesians 4, verse 11. And it says, He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for what? Equipping. Equipping. Everyone say equipping. 
We are being trained. Equipping means trained. You know, I, sometimes we should have changed this instead of a Bible training manual from eternity. You know, because <laughs> people have turned so many, the enemy has turned so many things to religiosity. You know, we, we lose sight that God is training us. His, he said, come and learn from me, right? Well, then he's training me and you. Training never stops. It's on the job training, amen? So he's equipping us for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the what? Edifying of the body of Christ till we what? All come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? Perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's the fullness of the anointing. Till we understand that we are our spirits and our spirit should supersede every part about our being. Amen. Verse 14. Because when that happens, you know what that happens? And then this is what they, so that we should no longer what? Be children, immature. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, every voice of a stranger, every voice from hell, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the what? Truth and love may what? Everyone say grow up. Grow up. That's going to take maturing. That's going to take learning. That's going to take training, isn't it? In other words, so that we grow up so we're not moved anymore. Grow up where? In all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share. Does its share. Does its share. Does its share. Causes what? So when everybody does its share, it causes what? Growth. Of the body for the edifying of itself in love. You and I are being equipped. We're being trained. We're learning the life of Christ in exchange for ourself, for himself. Amen? It's constant. We're learning how to fight. We're learning how to walk. We're learning how to live in the future. We're learning how to stay filled with the spirit. We're learning to expose our enemies. We're discerning what spirits are attacking us. We want to be alert. We want to be sober. We want to have discernment. We want to be ready in season and out. How many of you know the devil always attacks when you don't know? And what you think you're strong in? Hello? You find that you're weakened. Because any area we think we're strong in, we need to turn that over to the Lord. Because even the word says, when we are weak, then we are what? Strong. Romans 16. Personal limitations. Now, how many of you know you can bring your own limitations on yourself? Well, that's what usually happens anyways. The enemy can only entice you. But when you agree with them, then it comes. Romans 16, verse 17. Let's speak it together. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learned or you were trained in what? Avoid them. One of the things we want to do is avoid these personal limitations. We want to avoid constantly to have things put on us where we are limited, where there is a, a ceiling over our growth in the spirit. We want to avoid those things. Well, you're not going to avoid it unless you what? Discern it. You can't avoid something you can't discern. For those who are such do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ, but their what? Own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. 
and, as, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. In other words, we want to avoid these things that's going to prevent our spiritual growth. But again, you won't avoid them unless you can discern them. Amen? Galatians chapter 5. Everyone say, I am spirit. Galatians 5, 7. Would you take a minute and lift your hands to heaven and just get a drink? Fill us, fill us. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Fill us, fill us, and overflow us, Lord. We drink from your throne. We drink from the living waters of the well of the glory of God. Thank you, Master. Yes. Pour out that oil all over. Yeah. <laughs> Glory. Ah, verse 7, would you read it with me? Where am I at? Okay. <laughs> Galatians 5, 7, what does it say? You what? You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? In other words, you were growing. You were maturing. What happened? What's happened? You, why, have you ba why have you stopped? Why have you backslidden? Why? What have you done? Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Who hindered you from growing? This persuasion doesn't come from the Lord. It calls, who calls you, a little leaven. How many of y'all know the word leaven means evil? It says a little evil or a little leaven leavens the what? The whole lump. It only takes a little seed of evil to begin to explode. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecutions? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to what? Liberty or what? Freedom. Only do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh because it will bring a limitation on us. But through love, serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, he explains a little bit more now. He's going to share us about limitations. What does he say next? But if you what? Bite and devour one another. Beware, lest you become what? Consumed by one another. In other words, limitations. Does everybody see this? Then, of course, he says, I say, then walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the flesh and the lust of the flesh. Leaven, again, is sin. It's the presence of evil. It's the presence of darkness. It's ungodly influence that sets and establishes limitations and desires. To bring limitations. How many of y'all know a desire can bring a limitation? Because it's an ungodly desire will bring a limitation. It's amazing how many good Christians there are out there that are still fornicating or saying they're good Christians. Well, it's a good Christian boy or a good Christian girl or whatever. And they're living in sin. That's a limitation. Any sin will bring limitation. It stops growth. You know, when I was a kid, I always heard, don't smoke. You won't grow any. They'll stop your growth. <laughs> don't smoke. I don't know. How come there's six foot five people that are smoking then? You know? <laughs> because that was a carnal thing. Amen? You may not live to be six foot five, but, you know. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Personal limitations. Where you been, sister? I've been saying it since the beginning. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
You need to break those limitations. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you be careful. <laughs> Where did I say to go? I'm pulling, I'm turning pages here and going, what the heck am I doing? First Thessalonians. Somebody took Thessalonians out of my Bible. Oh, there it is. Somebody stole Thessalonians. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Can't be. Oh. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Whew. Thessalonians 4, 1. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Hmm. Do we need to put these on the wall now or what? <laughs> All right, let's read it together. Finally, brethren, we urge and exalt in the Lord Jesus that you should abound what? More and more. Does that mean grow? Yeah. Yeah. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your what? Sanctification. That you should abound or abstain from what? Sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. In other words, for God did not call us to what? Uncleanness to what? Holiness. Therefore, who, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. So understand that sexual immoralities and things to that degree, defiling the bed. Even in marriage, you sh we shouldn't, there's no defiling of the bed. Amen? We're to bow more and more and more to grow and grow so we can expose our, any personal limitations in our life. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? I'm blessed and highly flavored. Verse 17, let's read it together. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles in stupidity, and, oh, in future. Fertility of their mind, having their understanding what? Dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the what? Ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with what? Greediness. What does he say? You have not so learned Christ. You have not so learned Christ. You haven't learned. But I go to church, I go to this, I go to... But you're not learning. Why? Because when you learn, you put it to practice. If you're not learning it, then you're not putting it to practice. Why? Because you believe it, you receive it, you execute it. Amen? So there are a lot of people with a lot of word stuff. I mean, there are people out there who quote scriptures like crazy. But they're still not putting things into practice. They quote scriptures and go right back to who they are, carnality. Oh, Hallelujah. He said, but you've not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you what? You put off. You put off what? Concerning your former conduct. Did your former conduct have limitations? You kidding? It was a life of limitations. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful loss and be renewed in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit. Everyone say spirit. Everyone say, I am spirit. 
I have the mind of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And that you put on the what? New creation, the new man. Everyone say, I'm a new man. Which was created according to God in true righteousness and what? Holiness. Now he's going to expose the stuff that brings limitations. What is it? Therefore what? Lying. Lying will bring a limitation for people's growth. Let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't what? Don't sin. That's called righteous anger. You know how many people get angry and start sinning? Well, it brings the limitation. Thank God you can repent quickly when you get in the flesh. Get out of there. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the, the devil that brings what? Limitations. Let him who stole steal no longer. So is stealing going to do it? Amen. But rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Hello. You want a limitation? The tongue of limitation. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Believe me, when the Holy Spirit backs off, every other demon comes. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Those are all areas of, that bring limitations on our life. How about touching something unclean? How about when God asks you to do something, you say no? Hmm. You say no to God, you say yes to the devil. Are you, amen? Make no place. Hebrews 5. As, as we are going on in this, the Holy Spirit's going to begin to reveal to you limitations in your life. If you'll just hear him, you can start writing them down. He's going to bring things to remembrance of limitations. Hebrews 5.12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For though by this time you ought to be what? Teachers. What's he rebuking them for? Limitations because they're not growing. Amen? You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Why? That means he's already taught them. And he's got to teach them over again. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to what? Discern both what is good and what is evil. Why? Good brings increase, maturity. Evil brings limitations. Does everybody understand that? God promotes righteousness. Where there's limitations in an area of our life, it will not promote righteousness. It promotes self. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little bit further. You know, one of the things that happens to individuals is they begin to lose the zeal for God's presence and they begin to lose the zeal for his house and his body. You can be sure there's a set limitation there. Amen? What happens is an individual begins to make excuses. Excuses. Every kind of excuse to get out, not avoid God's presence. Every kind of excuse to do the right, righteous thing. Every kind of excuse to gather together. The word says, forsake not to assemble. Why is that excuse? Because of limitations. Can that person grow? No. No. So there must be a zeal always maintained. That's a thirst and hunger. A zeal is a thirst and hunger. Why? Because we want to learn. Didn't we come here today to learn? Amen. Amen. We came here because we're hungry. We want to know more. 
See, but the enemy will put a limitation and brings justifications and reasonings. Well, you know, uh, I, 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 I need to work more. I need to do this more. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the eye syndrome. Three eyes and you're out. Mark 4. But I need to wash my car. I need to fertilize my lawn. All of these excuses. Oh, the dog's got a cold. It's dust up his nose. Uh, or the cat's got a fur ball. <laughs> Mark 4. <laughs> Verse 3. Jesus said, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no crop. But other seed fell on what? Good ground and yield a crop and sprang up and what? Increased. Everyone say increased and what? Produced. Do you understand that when you and I grow, we increase and produce. We increase and produce more. And they increased and produced some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. Of course, now Jesus turns around and he begins to explain this in verse 13. He said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay? Satan comes. All right? Powers of darkness. These likewise are the ones sown on the stony ground who when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. Woohoo, great, thank you. But they don't put it into practice. And they have no root in themselves and endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. They think worst first. Now, these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering choke the word and it becomes what? Unfruitful, can't grow. Again, what did it happen? These are limitations placed, aren't they? But these are the ones sown on good ground. Everyone say, I'm good ground. Those who hear the word accept it. And bear fruit. Why? Because they believe, they receive, and they execute. Some 30, some 60, and some 100. Does everybody get that? That parable explains it all. See, if you don't believe it and don't receive it and execute it, then you're going to bring a limitation. 1 Corinthians 2. Freedom. Everybody wants freedom, right? Everybody wants to feel great, right? First Corinthians chapter two, verse six, please. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Come on, start writing those down as the Holy Spirit's revealing to you your personal limitations. Because we're going to pray over them today.
Is everybody there? Verse 6, would you read it with me? However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our, for our glory. Whose glory? Our glory. Everyone say, I'm spirit. Which none of the rulers of the age knew, for if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the what? Yes, the what? Deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, hallelujah, but the spirit who is from God. Why? Because we're a new creation in Christ. We are not spirits. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But, of course, the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They are what? Spiritually discerned. Again, God wants us to be free from all limitations and established in a mature state of being, able to teach, live, and express Christ overcoming all the ways of limitations from this world and anything that will come against you. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Therefore I what? I remind you to what? Stir up the gift of God or stir yourself up which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. I believe that's the most powerful limitation in a person's life is fear. And the enemy is always trying to entangle us and reestablish us with fear. Fear is the most deadly emotion. There's a fear of reverence to God, amen, which is honor, respect, and reverence, but there's the fear, which is terror. People are afraid. People walk in fear, and they curse themselves when they say, well, I'm afraid to do that. Well, you just brought, just brought a limitation on you. See, what you agree with, amen, brings that limitation. Where do they have dominion over that? What happens when fear comes? It says, well, then you don't have a sound mind, and your love turns into anxiousness. Amen? And of course, if your love turns into anxiousness and you don't have a sound mind, well, you're not walking in power. Again, how many of y'all know, look at the world wants to medicate everyone. Oh, you stubbed your toe. Here, take this. That's okay. You'll be addicted only for a little while. <laughs> then we have detoxes for that. Let me tell you, medication will set limitations. Does everybody get it? Well, does limitations promote connection or promote disconnection? Disconnect. Then a person begins to live out of the mind instead of out of the spirit. Is everybody okay? Psalm 1. Psalm 1. It's amazing how many people take ungodly counsel. They get counsel from everywhere but God or from the office of counsel, from the Holy Spirit. How many, how, how, or, or people that reject counsel of the Lord. Does that bring limitations? Amen. What does it say? Verse 1, Psalm 1, blessed is the man. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. See, people don't acknowledge that part. 
Everybody wants to be blessed, but don't people, people don't realize that you can bring a curse on yourself too. Blessed is the man who does what? Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So what happens about the person who does walk in the counsel of the ungodly? He's cursed. Is a curse a limitation? Yes. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But he delights in the law or the truth of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. In other words, he always acknowledges and compares everything with truth of God. That's called comparing spiritually, discernment. Not according to what man says, not according to the will of man, not according to a feeling or an emotion or a circumstance. Everything is determined by the truth of God Almighty. For he will be like a what? He's going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Come on, we all love the river. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also will not wither. And whatever he does will what? He's going to prosper. Why? Is that increase? Amen. That's called growth, isn't it? Because that person has removed all limitations in their life. But the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment or the reward, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Is rebellion a limitation? Yeah. And I'm going to close at Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4 and verse 1. Let's speak it. What's the first word? Hear. Hear. You know, when people listen, they nod. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they walk away. And they don't do nothing about it. They're just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Did you ever explain something to someone? They walk away, yeah, I got it. And they don't even, what the heck? I thought we talked about this already. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you hear, you do. When you hear, you obey. If you listen, you justify. Amen? Let me tell you, give you the, some, another simple example of listening and, and hearing. Here's $20 for gas. Cool. Can I get 25? Why? Isn't 20 sufficient? Does everybody understand that? So there's five more dollars of gas, but the $20 is sufficient. See, so many times we ask for more when God has get, already said what he said. How many times, in, even in the word of God, it will, it will express something? Well, you know, because the word says very something very important. It says... After you do the will of God, the promise is released. Amen? So, people are asking for the promise without doing the will of God. But, well, then you're not listening. I mean, you're not hearing. You're only listening. You're going, yeah, 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 but you're not hearing. Hearing says, I got it, and I'm going to do it. You know, even Elijah told his servant, he says, look, when you, tr when you go, when I'm sending you on a mission, I don't want you to stop and talk to nobody. I want you to go there, fulfill it, and come back. How many of y'all know that when God sends us on a mission, so many times the enemy's there to try to distract, sway? Amen? Uh, look at, that's his job. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy don't ask for God to, don't ask God for something that you know you're not supposed to. I'm telling you, that will set a limitation. 
Is everybody okay? Psalm 4, verse 1. I love the first word, hear. Hear. Hear, my children, the instruction of a what? A father. And give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my what? Words. That means you got to hear it, don't you? Keep my commands and what? And live. Get what? Wisdom. Get what? Understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. He said, don't forget. Why? Because you have to hear. When you listen, you forget. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom. Wisdom is what? Is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Wisdom tells you what to do. And in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear my son. He says it again. And receive my sayings. And the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be what? Hindered. Does limitation hinder your steps? Yes. When you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, nor do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Here we go. There's that word again. Avoid it. Why? We want to avoid limitations, don't we? Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. How many know that the powers of darkness are assigned to you to cause you to stumble? They wait for you. They will shoot arrows at you. Every day there is a group of demons that is assigned to each and every one of us. And when the when the demons are not strong enough to try and overtake you, they send stronger ones. They're always constantly to try to cause us to stumble. Listen, you're not fighting flesh and blood, but powers of darkness. We got, you got to, we got to start asking ourselves more and more, who told me that and where would you come from? Making what an unseen to become what? Seen. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. That's the reward. Do you understand that? Man, I, I, I knew uh, I had this circumstance in my life where I, I pulled over the side of the road to try and help somebody. And they had a Bible there and everything. To make a long story short, this person never rested constantly called and all kinds of stuff and come to find out she was she proclaimed to be a Christian and everything she was a witch and her husband came to me and said man look at I can't handle this any longer with my wife she practices witchcraft even though she tells everybody she's a Christian I said whoa he said she stays up all night constantly practicing witchcraft what they call white magic I don't know pink blue magic witchcraft is witchcraft what does it matter and he said, man, I can't take it any longer. I thought, whoa. It's amazing to me. In that arena, they cannot rest until they do evil. That is their reward. Verse 17, would you read it with me? For they what? They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the what? Shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness they do not know what makes them stumble. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. And do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. 
Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put, pers put pers perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and let your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Personal limitations. Father, we are honored and blessed, and we thank you for your word. And Lord, all the limitations that are written down here, and Lord, in the, in to, for each and every one, Lord, that may be some of the limitations we haven't brought to remembrance. But Father, we just lift everyone in this room and every listener, and anyone watching this video, and we ask, Master, that every limitation that has been brought to their remembrance, and those that I haven't. We touch and agree, and we break every limitation off of every person here as we repent for allowing any limitations to be entangled with us. We repent for those things. We put the blood of Jesus in these areas, and we ask that the anointing cut loose every area of limitation, of deception, of fear, of lust, and every entanglement in the affairs of this world, that we may be set free from all limitations and that we may have discernment and wisdom to avoid any future entanglements of limitations so that we may walk free in the Spirit and be an expression of your character that others will see you in us with no bondage of limitation in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.